Find a cleric four, tier two. Daniel. Save a formation? I did. Yeah, okay. That's limited. Yep, yep, yep. Hey, speaking of daddy is. No, oh, what? We're just going. We're going Dell on a DPS. Okay. Uh, with the Dark Urge tank. Sure. Sure. I mean, this seems like a viable formation. everybody yeah something like this and it goes a little something like this all right uh, Gail's gonna oh you know what? turn this off whoopsie uh, magic I think we I think he went front instead of back and no he did behind okay cool cool okay i don't know what gail picked we saved gail in some formation and three columns at yeah that was garbage all right we run into a problem i was gonna put gail into the one where uh 50 of attacks missed to try to keep the dark urge alive but Well, you can, Letty F. See, you didn't you didn't know how to do this. You get a five gallon bucket. <laughs> Hold on, wait for me to finish. <laughs> but you get a five gallon bucket of water. You can go get it from a uh, you can get a gift from your neighbor. And when you need to go to the bathroom, you you flush and you take the top off the toilet and then you pour the water into the back of the toilet until it fills up and then you can flush your toilet over and over and over again. Because your toilet just needs water to refill, and you can refill it with a five-gallon bucket. You're welcome, folks. So if your water ever goes out, you can still use your toilet. You just need a five-gallon bucket and, and a friendly neighbor that'll let you fill the bucket up. Like, stuff happens. You gotta find ways to work around it. Oh, if you have a no-tank toilet, you pour it into the bowl. That works, too. But yeah. Uh, Aggie Jess, uh, maybe, maybe not. Um, oh yeah, I already did it. You have a diamond next to your name. You have a diamond next to your name. But yeah, we had a once, I don't know. I know my mom either forgot to mail the payment in or it didn't, or it got delayed the mail. I don't know what happened. But the, but the water company came out and turned the water off on a Friday afternoon. So we couldn't even, like, like, like the second it went off, I was like, "What the hell?" And they're like, "Well, we're we're closed now." And I'm like, "What? Like, what are you people doing? How do you just put somebody out of water for their whole weekend without any way to get it back on?" They didn't care. They didn't care. Mm. So yeah, so we had to we had to break out the fucking out buckets. Plus, if you just gotta pee, you can go pee in your toilet. You don't have to flush that right away. I grew up in California, like in the seventies as a little kid, and their whole thing—they they literally had a campaign to conserve water, and it was like, uh, if it's yellow, let it mellow; if it's brown, flush it down. Like that was their campaign. Everyone knew that, and like that was the thing in the seventies—you didn't flush your toilet unless you know 
because he had to. Just to save water. Nowadays, nobody gives, nobody cares. I mean, they should care, but they don't. Nice, Cal. See, Cal knows. <laughs> you remember those signs on the toilets? Yeah, look, it was a like it was a whole thing. I I don't know why they don't do it today either, but you know. California's got even less water, less fresh water now. I don't have. I'm like, why is there? Why do we not have Humon out? Oh yeah, we can't. We don't get Humon. That's why. Garwar. <sighs> oh look, if you have asparagus for dinner, you know what you did. You're like Quebec. You know what you did. It wasn't just a California thing? All right, well, I only knew about it from California because it was a big deal. I mean, look, even even like like now, I remember 15 years ago being in my aunt's house and she still, when they, uh, she had a five gallon, she had a big bucket in, in, the, uh, in her master bathroom because whenever you start, whenever she would put it under the, uh, the faucet, whenever she'd go to uh, start a bath or a shower, and turn it on and until the water got to the right temp we put it into the bucket and then put it into the bath and then take the bucket and go water the plants like so you weren't wasting water she was still doing that again like she'd gotten into that habit back in the 70s Well, but record flooding and a lack of, of clean water are two different things. Two vastly different things. You can flood simply because you're like, you know, desert areas flood, but the water doesn't go anywhere useful. That's the problem. That's why it's a flood. Like, uh, yeah. In fact, when you have floods, all you have is filthy water. You don't. Like, you don't want to get it anywhere near your mouth or any open sores in a flood. Because it's got, it's filthy. It's absolutely filthy. Pepsi created the drink Mellow Yellow in 79. <laughs> oh, no. I'm not, I'm not doing an outhouse. Uh, I, read, I, got, I read an interesting article about outhouses. Uh, tangentially about outhouses. Um, like, I grew up probably like a lot of people with everybody going, black widows are the most dangerous spiders. Like, a black widow's bite can be deadly. I've Stay away from black widows. You could die before they could get you to the hospital. Blah, 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 right? Uh, ad break. Oh, stay tuned for more about black widows when we come back. I was on a roll, too. I like this story already. Oh, wait. Wait for it. Wait for it. Cliffhanger! Yeah. <laughs> and we'll be right back after a message from our sponsors.
we back? We're back. Okay, so Black Widows. So when I grew up, uh, everybody was like, Black Widows are the worst. Ads are pro Black Widows. Yeah, the Black Widow lobby was uh, trying to cover up this, the truth about Black Widows. No, um, and saying like, hey, if you get if you get bit, like, you might die before you even get to the hospital. Blah, blah, blah. Well, now we know that's not the truth. This was. It wasn't. It wasn't propaganda. It was. It was. It was a lived reality. But only. But it was. But it was word of mouth. Uh, because of outhouses. Because the thing that they didn't tell you is where were most of these people that were dying from black widow bites getting bitten, in an outhouse. They were, you know. Dropping their pants, sitting down, and a black widow would crawl up and and bite him in the sensitive parts. And when the poison was in, is in or venom is injected there, yeah, you're toast. But if you get bit on like, uh, apparently the reality is if you get bit on like your hands or your feet or something. Uh, it's actually it's not that bad. I'm not saying it's not bad. I'm saying you know. It's not, oh god, you're dead. Like, get to the hospital, get an antivenom. But the reason it was deadly was because people had outhouses. And the places where they were the deadliest is in, the, is in states and areas where more people were using outhouses. And you were getting bit in the outhouse because they like a, a cool, dark place. That's where they want to be. Well, guess where it's cool and dark? Your outhouse. Uh, yeah. So it's interesting, like, how truth is, is twisted, especially back then, by, by, you know, the perceptions of what you're experiencing, and not necessarily the reality. Like, the scientific reality is, well, it depends on where, like, Black Widows are super deadly if they bite you in the right spot. If they bite you in the right spot. If you're wearing clothes, <laughs> and they bite your bare skin somewhere... I, not as light threatening. Still, you could still die. I'm not saying you can't. I was just when it's biting you, like you know, real close to major uh, veins and arteries. Yeah. Yeah, quicksand was uh, oh, quicksand was uh, you know, seemed like a horrible problem, uh, and why you wouldn't want to go uh, exploring, but you know, quicksand only exists in like a couple places in the world, it, or something. Oh, roars can be quite far from hospitals. I mean, that's another that's a, that's another part of the reality, but but when you know you get b bit in the you know sensitive areas and uh, uh, how close the hospital is isn't part of the problem, <laughs> is my understanding. Oof, Delatant. Yeah, that's not... I don't like snakes. I'm not a snake fan. Comes from growing up in an area where not only were there some deadly snakes around, uh, but they were like in the... There, we had deadly ones in the water. And we're on a lake where you want to swim a lot. And it's like... Mm. And nothing stops you from wanting to swim at your favorite swimming spot anymore by seeing a snake there, right where you were swimming. Nope, nope, don't want to come here anymore. Thanks. I'd like to live. Yeah. Oh, so don't even get me started on sulfurous well water. Uh, yeah. Look, I lived in a rural community. We had wells. I. Uh, 
man. Woof. Hey, Sergeant. Yeah, Black Widow, basically, yeah. For Patrona, we had mosquitoes? I mean, look, mosquitoes can kill you. So, you know. I mean, technically. <laughs> technically. Okay, let's go see what our Golder Kira chest game is. Nothing. A lot of Kira. Alright, let's take these contracts though. 28,000 tokens. Lunchtime, should I make a frozen pizza? Yes. Pre made frozen Chinese food? Sure. Marie Calendar's chicken pot pies. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you've got a big lunch plan. Yeah, Bard's Forge. I don't know, you know. Rumor on the street is it was a buff. But I haven't uh, I haven't had a chance to try it. I wouldn't call those heavy lunches, but I guess to each their own. So see, I, I enjoyed when I was living in Mexico and lunch was the biggest meal of the day. I don't know, it just works. Maybe you sleep before dinner? I did, I did and that's why, why they had siestas. <laughs> I literally have lunch, go upstairs, crawl into bed, take a nap for like an hour, hour and a half, get up and Go about the rest of my day. Yeah, that's making pizza frozen. Not making frozen. Well, I guess you can do it either way. That's making pizza pose frozen and making frozen pizza. Sure. I mean, either way it works. A new player reference. There's a new player reference. Working on the planning ahead section for Vajra and split the party too.
I think our chips are here. Oh, let me check. All right, it was. We got the new sun chips, but then it reminded me that I went to the grocery shopping last night and I found these. Sun chip, black bean, southwest queso. Come on, open. These better be good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Oh, those are good. That's a whole other thing. Like, those don't taste like normal sun chips. Because they're made with black beans. Like, as part of the chip. Before the flavor kicks in. Like, before they do the southwestern queso. Good stuff.
But here's the thing, I like the flavor. I wouldn't eat, I wouldn't, there, there's, it's safe to eat because I wouldn't, like, sit down and consume a whole bag. Because I wouldn't want to eat, like, a lot of it at once, but it's good. It's definitely got a little bit of a kick to it. Not a whole lot. I still prefer garden salsa, the southwestern queso. But yeah, that's pretty good. Harvest cheddar is okay. Like, I like the harvest cheddar. Harvest cheddar to me is like a... It's like... Like, that's a competition with, like, nacho cheese Doritos or something. Like, harvest cheddar sun chips. But it doesn't have, like, a, 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 like a kick to it. It's just a good cheese flavor. And I prefer that to nacho cheese, like, chips. Whereas this one's got a... This one's got some spice with it. There's the cheesiness, and then you can definitely tell the black bean. Yeah, no, it's not worth that much, Caffeinia. Yeah, I mean, look, I tried to look up just trying to buy a bag of these because I because my store hadn't been stocking any sun chips, and I just happened to look uh, yesterday because I was in that aisle getting it was the same they for some reason they had, uh, or it was right next to the aisle with like oatmeal, so I, I stopped and I looked just to see I'm like, oh, do they have any? And they did, uh, and. Compared to what I, I would have had to pay like three times as much if I wanted to order them offline. And I'm in the U.S., so I can only imagine it's way worse other places. Yeah, and it's probably that much before shipping, and then shipping is just as much, right? Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I mean, like, whenever you can go, whenever you travel somewhere and you can get something good, like, it's like, okay, pick that up and go. Right? Like, when people would come visit me in San Diego, they'd want to go down to TJ to get vanilla. Right? Mexican vanilla. Because, because, yeah, Mexican vanilla. Uh, Unlike the little, unlike the little containers of it that you get in the stores here in the states, you get a bottle of Mexican vanilla, um, and then when I would uh, when I would come back to Oklahoma, or sometimes my when my grandparents would like ship me like a care package from Oklahoma, there's like a salad dressing that's made here that you just can't get, like I couldn't get anywhere else, and they would send me bottles of it.
We're going to do 350. We're going to run out of speed potions because we didn't have speed champions. These 30 minutes of speed potions. I should have used one of these. I wasn't thinking about it. I wasn't thinking about the fact that I should use an hour one. I wasn't thinking about the fact that this is uh, this didn't allow Human. We just had Shandy. Or Minsk, whatever. Yeah, there's different drinks in different parts of the country, too. Like, when I was in college, I could only get uh, Henry Weinhardt's root beer when I was back in the Pacific Northwest. You know, yeah, yeah, probably don't know what cactus cooler is. Hold on. Brig bought Dr. Pepper? Wow, okay. Sure. When it's still Dr. Pepper Snapple? What? Oh, the cans are. Wow, there's a lot of stuff under that label, I know, I guess. Oh wow, and they're the group that owns Squirt, which is a Mexican drink. I would, yeah. That stuff was great, like you just make uh, budget uh, margaritas with just tequila and Squirt. They would basically you would you would order tequila, you get like bottle service, and they'd bring out that, and then they'd bring you squirt with it, like. But but it was better to just like you mix it, and drink it like it was a discount margarita. Hmm. I'm getting sucked in by Wikipedia. Oh no. I didn't realize. Wait, what? I didn't realize what companies all got wrapped up with Dr. Pepper, though. I always thought it was kind of its own thing, but. But no. Dr. Pepper, Snapple, RC Cola, AW, 7 Up, Schweppes. I <laughs> saw a hilarious joke on the internet but somebody didn't understand how to pronounce that. Sunkissed, Canada Dry, Big Red, Mott's, where is the applesauce? Verner's Hawaiian Punch, Knee High, and Squirt. Wow. Oh, uh, okay. But at some point it was... It was Cadbury Schweppes America's Beverages? What did Cadbury get mixed up with that? Uh. Cadbury, Cadbury Schweppes was who was buying everything. Oh, 
Wait, what? These companies that buy all these other companies, I just, it's so confusing. Like, what, they own what now? <laughs> yeah, what? All right, I gotta stop. That's gonna, that's the worst. Wow. Orange pineapple is not a bad flavor, honestly. Anyway, I like yellow. Like, like oranges and, and pineapple. And it's citrusy and sweet. Mm. Well, Black Widow, I guess now it's. I mean, it was a major a major distributor in Mexico. It got bought. I mean, it's like Dr. Pepper apparently Dr. Pepper 7-Up bottling was apparently became a major distributor. Had way more things under their umbrella than I ever imagined. I thought it was just Dr. Pepper. I was wrong. Well, again, Schweppes is now under Keurig Dr. Pepper. That's the name of the company now. It is. It's the Island of Misfit Beverages. They had YooHoo in there. YooHoo is part of that now. RC Cola and Moon Pie, man. I yeah, I almost bought a Moon Pie the other day, and then I remembered, and then I remember, and I was like, mm, like that nostalgia kick. And then I remembered what they taste like, and I was like, no, I'm good. I'm good, I remember. Yeah, I won't take a meal away from a working man. <laughs> I won't that I won't take that meal away from a working man.
the other planning ahead thing done. And I think at that point I'm going to stop because after that it would be Dragon Bait. We aren't even that far, so I don't even know what I would change yet there. I need to play a reference on pause. Maybe we should update split the party. Maybe. I just realized I don't have my water bottle. I need to go get my water bottle. Yes, patrons refresh. Oh, hold on. Shop. Buy me a piece. Buy me a piece. Yay. Yay. And we're up to seven time gate pieces. Oh god, we need to do a time gate. We can do a time gate. All right, let me do my stretch and then I'm gonna have to go, go get my water bottle. I washed it, it's sitting in the dish drainer. All right, got washed. Creamless egg? No, I don't want. I don't do eggs. A normal egg? No. I don't like like hard-boiled eggs. It's okay. They're okay. But I can only eat the white part of like a hard-boiled egg. I don't like the yellow part. No. All right, I'll be back. I'm gonna go get. Uh, I'm gonna go get my water bottle.
All right, water. Scotch egg. Someone, someone described a scotch egg, and now I can't remember. Probably not. I don't know. Who were talking about this? I like scrambled eggs. That's how I like my eggs. I like my eggs scrambled. Is the only part that matters. I, I don't like it. I don't like the texture. I don't like the taste. Definitely hate deviled eggs. Mm -mm. Nope. Look, it's a. I, I, I had to fill up this bottle. It's a big bottle. Oh, that's right. Sausage around an egg is a scotch egg. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I like scrambled eggs. I I did remember seeing that. I remember seeing that on a on a food show, and be like, huh. That's a neat way to do that. Probably not gonna. Probably not gonna eat one. Well, on my first patron, can I do patron challenges and event free plays too? No, because you can't have a patron enabled for events. So no. Has to be a regular. You know, you have to activate a patron on the map screen and then. And then do a free play. And when you try to do an event, any event with a patron, it'll say, we're, we're turning your patron off. It's like, okay. <laughs> Oatmeal lobby. Uh, how do we get to the Humpty Dance? I don't, I don't understand how we got to the Humpty Dance. Yeah, I don't no no sunny side up and running, no no bacon, no thanks. It's all yours. You don't have to get, uh, get upset, it just means it's more for you to eat. It's more for you to eat. I had a I had a bagel breakfast sandwich yesterday. I like everything bagel, egg, uh ham, cheese. Mmm. So good. So oh, good. That's a lot of eggs. I, I don't want a burger with that on it, either. I don't want a burger with a runny egg on it. It's, it's all yours. I like it. I like to have a hamburger that has cheese on it. No thanks.
It's sitting there about how Delon is. Okay. I was like, did did I did I build this right? Are we actually getting dealt that we built this for Delona, but I wasn't sure if it was actually working. We have 80 areas to go. We're still in the click damage phase. Man, I think I'd get sick having 20 Cadbury... Oh, mini eggs, I was going to say. Like Cadbury cream eggs in a day? Mm -mm, that's too much. I don't know. What, what are the mini eggs? Are they mini, are they mini Cadbury cream eggs? Or is it a different thing? chocolate oh, okay okay yeah that's what i okay yeah we have egg. we have a little we have a little mini eggs like that i just didn't know that made some the ones here are usually pretty garbage the ones here are usually pretty garbage Oh, E36 is way more than enough for Catalina. I did it with uh, E30. I did it with E30. It's it's more that you're going to need, like, Caddy has to have decent gear. Doesn't have to be full epic or anything, but blues and purples. Um, if you don't have the Dark Urge and Dungeon Master, I don't know, actually, because I had the Dark Urge. That's a good question. Then the extra favor may come in handy. What you're going to need to know to do is the thing I was uh, demonstrating yesterday. And that's that when you get to the, the Area 50 boss, Bailey Earl Tavabent, because you can't just one-shot her. Well, there's two tricks. You can't just one-shot her. And if she attacks Caddy Bree, Caddy Bree's going to die. So... When you get to her, she has an animation where right before she attacks, she starts to bring her left arm back. And the second you see her start to bring her left arm back, you have to click on her manually. Uh, and what it does is it interrupts the attack animation. And when it interrupts the attack animation, she doesn't attack that time. So anytime you see her arm go to move, like she's got kind of a little bit of a, a shuffle, but then she goes like this. And then it's like cast, right? And so as it comes back, click on her, it interrupts the attack. Then she can never attack you in the boss levels and, and you can go right through it. Um, the other thing you wanna, you're going to want is a fire breath potion active because uh, that way you don't have to worry about her Caddy Breeze base attack cooldown. Even though she is attacking faster and you have her ultimate, there are times where on areas with ranged enemies... They'll attack you before you can clear them all out. And if you have a Fire Breath Potion going with Familiars in the field, you just kill them all instantly. So those are the two tricks for, like, the high, as you get higher into it. Um, early on, you're probably fine. The attack damage from the boss isn't that big. But as you get towards the end of your, towards the end of your push, if you find you're dying on a regular level, Fire Breath Potion will stop that. And if you're dying on the boss, then you have to start doing the, the attack interrupt.
Yeah, the boss levels are messing up. Then you have to do the interrupt. Yeah, you got to do the interrupt. I was trying to figure out a way. I'm like, yeah, I, can, I mean, I need to get past this and I can give, you know, I can use health potions and try to beef her up, but it doesn't turn out that well. And I'm like, what could I do? And then I, I remembered, I remembered that back in the tutorial for the game in a brief tour of the realms, it teaches you that, uh, hey, when a ranged enemy comes on the field and they like notch their bow and they start to pull their bow back, if you click on them, they won't attack you at all. Uh, and, and it works on magic casters too. Works on magic users too. But it won't work forever. It won't work forever. <laughs> It'll, you'll get about like on the same boss, which it doesn't need to on Bailey Errol because she, she's, she's only there through a few, for, for a few spawn, but you get somewhere between 10 and 15 stuns out of like, uh, disrupts and then she won't get disrupted anymore. She becomes immune to it. Yeah, the thing about the Dark Urge, like I did Caddy in the Dark Urge, but the Dark Urge was setting my bud. And it was he was setting it above because Caddy Bree was buffing him. So he was get putting up good damage numbers and that kept my bud up. So I think with E30, I might, I don't know if I'd have had enough bud just on Caddy Bree alone uh, with just her with four blues and two purples to finish. I don't know. Um, because yeah. again like tier two of stuff is they're expecting like you can kind of look at it as well you're going to need good gear and good you're going to need actual damage that isn't just coming from favor you know a lot of favor can help but it, it might not be everything you need and so i don't, I don't know so keep some uh you know if you've got some all champs damage potion, keep them in reserve and see, you might need them towards the end. I don't know. I don't know. Caddy in the Dark Urge coming to CBS this fall. Oh, that would be a horrible show. Just remembered. Okay. Like I've got the raid running on my other monitor, but it was behind the screen. I totally forgot it was there. Totally forgot it was there. Offline progress. I mean, offline progress is another way. Set up your formation. Throw down a fire breath. Shut the game off. Come back later. Let's see what happens. See what happens. Sometimes that's how you get around a weird restriction in a variant. Was I wearing? Uh, reviewing Split the Party Guide.
What else? I get a better guide and One of my bounties to max my green grass flowers. I mean, if you need more gear, if you want more gear for your current event champions, then yes, I do it. I haven't spent mine yet. I'm at 28,000, but that's because I don't, I haven't decided who I want to spend them on yet. Have I done overwhelming force on this count yet? No. I haven't even done the base variant yet. Uh, still working, still working towards that. We we had to detour to Waterdeep so that we could unlock Vajra because we hit we hit thirty champions so quickly. Uh, otherwise, we'd probably be there by now. But that's fine. But they convert anyways, so no reason not. Contracts don't. Wait. Well. So here's the thing, Puff Elf. If you have, if you have all the gear you want on your current event champions, um, then you don't want to spend bounty contracts. If you're if you're fine with your current event champions, like you hit full epic, they've got a lot of item levels. I'm getting there, Puff Elf. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Uh, can I finish? Uh, if, if your gear is where you want it to be, you don't want to use your bounty contracts because what will happen is if you have over 7,500 event tokens, when the event ends, the, the game will auto spend them randomly on event chest packs. So if you want to save all those extra tokens for the next event, you need to not use your bounty contracts. Because the game will spin them on this event. Now, after the event ends and you're below 7,500, so 7,499 or less, you can then pop all those bounty contracts and you'll have a fat stack for the next event. So, ad break. The slut, yeah. <laughs>
All right, we're back. Yeah, Monkey House, I mean, I, you know, I don't think it's bad that you spend a bunch. But, yeah. <laughs> Events now don't end. They start and end on Wednesdays. And, I mean, nowadays, because, of the, because you can carry some over, it's not as bad as before. And there's the auto spin. But... Both friendlier. Both a bit friendlier. Oh, I know. Speaking of friendly, it's time for a friendly gold chest. Hello, friend. You're not my friend. You're not my friend. That's not a speed potion. <laughs> That's not a speed potion. Basically, what I was trying to do was see, um, trying to see if based off, before I spin these contracts, Penelope, Caddy Bree, Spurt, so Penelope, 4-2, Caddy Bree, 4-2, Spurt, 4-2, Gale, 4-2, or Kira, 4-2. So four blues, two epics on everyone. And I was trying to see if any of these chests from doing the variants would give them an extra, like a third epic. Um, before I try to fish for, you know, before I start just randomly buying a chest for each champion. I should also check my average item levels. Mm -hmm. and then filter. Um, event. Cool. Owned versus unowned. You don't care. Okay. I hate you. All right. You're not my father. All right. Caddy Breeze. Six. Oh, well, that's yeah. Sixteen. Spurt. Thirteen. That will be sixteen. So so far, Spurt's the one. Here's 15. Gale's 11, okay. Gale needs, Gale and Spurt need more item levels. Gale and Spurt need more item levels. But we haven't, actually we haven't done a Gale's, we're doing one of Gale's variants right now, so. It seems like maybe Spurt might need a, a chest or two. Gale might need a chest or two, so we're gonna save, and we'll we'll try to get everybody roughly at equal item levels. I guess is our goal. <sighs> Ladder's Gate—that's a whole different game. Wow, uh, typos are great. I could check and have my item level of the blacksmithing contract if I had a blacksmithing contract. These are scrolls for Trials of Mount Tiamat that I don't even have access to yet. I The second I get a blacksmithing contract, it goes on Human. Like, the second it hits my inventory, it goes on Human. So... Yeah, Bladder's Gate is where Lediath lives at the moment. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I'm telling you, just get a bucket and go to the neighbor. And they go to their their outdoor faucet and just fill up your fill up your bucket. Be fine. Or just don't flush. Again. As long as just, all you gotta do is pee, you're fine. Uh, 
Okay, I put a note. Well, I put a comment in the uh, in the split the party guide update and the split the party quest update. Uh, that says, please keep in mind, just because you lose a champion doesn't mean you lose the whole seat. This is the whole reason they require you to have swaps in each bench seat. So hopefully now people, so many people are like, wait, I could swap? Ooh. The bowel spawn crisis? Oh no, oh no. Hey, Max, are you in King's Lummy? Welcome. Welcome. We just wanted to open the time gate to get Shandy. Shandy's great. Yeah, Oshimon, they misspelled my name. Let's just leave it there and don't go anywhere else. <laughs> hey, Sam. Okay, let's see. So I changed the first thing to use four champions instead of two. That should make things easier for people. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, everybody's dying. Everybody's dying. Drop the AOEs. Let's go. Let's go. Get them. Get them, Delana. Yeah, Delana did it. Delon is not useless, folks. Delon is not useless. Hey, Ponda Cleric 4, Tier 2. Complete. Complete. 